These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by going to my website. There's a link to the website in the info box. Uh, here's the address of my website, uh, www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. That address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Uh, or you can just use the link in the info box. Uh, I'll also mention that I offer tutoring uh, via Skype, um, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service also at this website. And again, there's a link to that site in the info box. Thank you. Let's keep thinking about the analogies between uh, translational and rotational uh, movement. So uh, let's see here, some of the ideas uh, that we'll need uh, for that. Um, so let's think about the idea of force. Or actually, um, let's think about the idea of uh, mass. So what's the symbol for mass? M. Lowercase m. m, good. And what is the uh, unit for mass, the standard unit for mass? A kilogram. That's right, not the gram, but the kilogram. All right, so last time we were talking about the rotational or angular analogs to all of these translational ideas. So there's also a rotational analog to the mass. Um, and that is what is called the moment of inertia, or capital I. Is that what they call it in your book? Let me check that out first. Yes. Uh-huh. They call it moment, yeah, moment of, inertia. of inertia. Okay. So that's just mass. It is the uh, analogous concept like mass. Oh, analogous that's right. concept. Okay. So it's not the same as mass, but it plays the same role for rotation that mass plays for translation. It's like the relationship between V and omega, or between A okay. and alpha. So that's our uh, moment of uh, inertia. What, what role does the mass play in translation? If, if you think about it, what the mass does is the mass tells you how hard it is to change the motion of an object, right? The mass tells you how hard it is to change the or affect the translational motion of an object. So the rotational inertia, the I, must tell you how hard it is to change the rotation of an object. Okay. Um, so the eye tells us how hard it's going to be to change uh, the rotation uh, of the object. Or to be a little bit more specific, M tells you how hard it is to create a, a, a translational acceleration, while I tells you how hard it is to create a rotational acceleration. Okay, so that would give us um, our uh, analogy there. And um, before we talk about how to find the moment of inertia, maybe we'll just uh, keep going for a second and see what another important concept is. So how about okay. force? Uh, what's the symbol for force? Uh, newtons. That's the unit. Oh, sorry. Uh, F. Right. Capital F is our unit for force. And as you were saying, uh, the unit is the newton. What, what, yes. is a fo what does a force do? Uh, a force is something that, uh, again, uh, is changing the, uh, the movement of an object. A force changes the translational movement of the object. Well, then we need a rotational analog to that. And that's something you learned uh, in this last chapter. It sounds like your instructor was going over that. Um, t any, any idea? What, what was the concept your instructor went over today it, that's the analogy uh, to force? Uh, torque. You got it. That's right. Torque. All right. Now, what's the symbol for torque? Um, this well, is T with the squiggly. Yeah, tau. And it's important to write that uh, correctly. So it doesn't look like a capital T, because a capital T would be twice as high, and it would have a straight crossbar instead of a squiggly crossbar. And it doesn't look like a lowercase t, because the lowercase t is also uh, twice as high. So try to draw your tau like I have it on the whiteboard so, that it, doesn't get, so it doesn't get confused with an uppercase t or a lowercase t. Because after all, we're already using uppercase t maybe for tension in a rope and we're already using lowercase t for time. So here we need a new symbol, tau. So it's worth uh, learning that word tau. That's the Greek letter for t. Um, so that would be an appropriate symbol for torque. So that's our symbol for torque. So uh, 
uh, inertia i mm -hmm. uh, what's the, it, does it have units that's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked that. Yes, it does have units, um, and uh, we'll, we'll come back to the moment of inertia later. So we'll, we'll, we'll fill in the units okay. some more later. Okay. Okay. All right, now oh, let's think about an equation. Um, do you remember what's the equation for Newton's second law? For translational movement. Oh. Uh, force equals the mass times acceleration. That's good. Let's improve that a little bit. We want to say net force equals mass times acceleration. Right, yeah, net force equals uh, mass times acceleration. And we can improve that a little bit too because we know that when we're solving problems, we never actually use this equation. We never use net force equals mass times acceleration. Instead, we use net force x equals max and, and net, net force, force y. y. Right. Equals M A Y. Okay. So those would be our translational Newton second laws. So now we need to have the rotational analog of Newton's second law. Well, we should be able to figure that out what that is based on all the um, analogous concepts we've already seen so far. So, so why don't you take a guess at that? What would be the equation for rotation that would trans that would correspond to Newton's second law over here? Uh, it would be torque. Net torque. Good. Net, net torque uh -huh. equals um, inertia. Moment of inertia. Good. Moment of inertia, uh, I guess, look for acceleration and be that alpha. You got it. Good. Okay. So we're just and using all of our analogous concepts. I'm sorry, you were saying? Oh, no, no. I was going to say, and then you just do your X and Y as well. That's a good question. It turns out we don't need that for rotation. There's just one net torque equation. Okay. So in, in that respect, torque is going to be simpler than uh, force. We just have one net torque equation. We never have to say net torque x or net torque y. Okay. Okay, good. So that's good that we came up with that uh, analogous uh, equation here. Uh, and by, th uh, oh, well, all right. So um, do you remember, how did we use the uh, net force equation? Well, remember, we had to identify all the forces on the object and then we listed them on the left-hand side of this equation, and we had to be careful to put in positive signs for the positive torques and negative signs for the negative torques. Um, and what did we do, uh, uh, I mean, for the positive forces and negative forces? And then we tried to plug in for the mass and the acceleration on the right. So we're really going to use this uh, net torque equation in the same way. We have to identify all the forces on the object, and then we will... Um, uh, identify, uh, li list them all on the left-hand side with the right signs, and then we try to plug in some stuff on the, the right-hand side. Okay, so in order to accomplish that goal, uh, we're going to have to talk more about how to calculate the torque. Uh, I, I shouldn't have spent so little time on the torque. So let's go back to that concept of torque and try to fill that in some more. I should have left myself some more space, so I'll go back and put that in again. All right, so notice here we have kind of a, a teeter-totter type uh, arrangement. <coughs> And, uh, or maybe, uh, yeah, and we're uh, thinking about uh, trying to uh, affect the rotation of uh, this teeter-totter. So let's think about what would be the things that would affect the rotation of the <laughs> teeter-totter. So, for example, we could exert a force on the object. We might exert, say, a 5 Newton force or maybe an 8 Newton force. Uh, which of those forces do you think would... Uh, have a bigger effect on the rotation, the 5 Newton force or the 8 Newton force? The uh, 8. Pretty much common sense, huh? Think. Yeah. So what that tells us is... Oh, can I stop you for one sec? Yes. When you're talking about rotation, because we were talking about this earlier, how is this seesaw or this teeter-totter, how is that a um, rotation? What's rotating? The teeter-totter is rotating around the fulcrum. For example, from this force, if you keep pushing like this, in a few seconds, the teeter-totter is going to look like this. I, I, I haven't drawn it very well. But notice how the teeter-totter is rotating around the fulcrum, right? Kind of like uh, my pen here. First, the teeter-totter looks like this, and then the teeter-totter looks like this. And if you kept pushing, it could rotate all the way around. This is not... Okay, that's yeah. what I... That's what I that's what I thought maybe that 
why they were doing that, but because I, I couldn't see it as like I was thinking of, of it as more as a 360 type potential, but I guess it does have 360 potential, right, for rotation. It's got the potential to go all the way around. It possibly could, but um, even okay. even if something can't rotate all the way around, it can still be going through rotational motion. Even if it just rotates okay. from horizontal okay. to like this, like my pen, even this is a rotation. There's no need for it to go the full 360. Okay. Okay. It's definitely not translational motion. Translational motion would be if the teeter-totter um, got up and moved from this point on the whiteboard to this point on the whiteboard, if the whole teeter-totter moved from one place to another. Oh, okay. So that certainly would not be, uh, so we're okay. certainly not thinking about translational motion here. It's definitely rotational around the fulcrum. I got you now. Okay. Thanks. Anyway, with our little example here, we saw that the bigger the force, the more the rotation. So obviously one thing that clearly affects the rotation is force.